Hey everyone, I want to talk to you about a very cool build that one of our users submitted. And uh, this is a user that's been around for a little while. Um, before that, I just want to let you know that the 12 terabyte Easy Store drives are $179.99. Now, that is pretty insane. Um, that's really, really good. So, just at this point, no questions asked, pick them up. That's what we were seeing 10 terabytes at a year ago. Uh, 12 terabytes for the same price. I mean, that's fantastic. Hopefully the 10s drop even lower. Hopefully the 8s drop even lower as well. But density always wins. Um, even if it's the same cost per terabyte, um, I would much rather the more dense, uh, the more dense option because you're using fewer drive bays. Um, your running costs are going to be in half because you're only running one drive versus two. And you just have more hard, well, you have less hardware to be worried about. And uh, yeah, so check out the 12 terabyte easy stores. They're right at the top of the forum. Um, I also tweeted about it, and it's been in the Tech Deals channel too. Um, yeah, you can't go wrong in that price. So, anyway. This is his completed build. People like to submit their builds and you get a nice little discord color if you complete one of these posts. Really all you have to do is just post pictures and specs uh, and just look a little bit about it. Um, so he's built a what he calls a PF Sense Watt, like you know my name. Um, it's a router. With, I mean it's a multifunction router. Uh, but it's got an i5-3470T, which is not to be confused with regular quad-core i5s. This is a dual-core, four-thread, low-power i5. Super ideal for, for this kind of application. Um, and he's fitted all into a one new box, which is very cool. So this follows his progression a little bit. Um, so you might see some picks that are earlier on. He's changed the hardware around a little bit. But his goal was to uh, just to serve himself gigabit. So he has a thousand down and only 50 meg up. That's kind of that's kind of rough. Um, but he saw kind of the same issues that I had with my USG. Um, I replaced my PF Sense before he got to it. Uh, got to doing this build. I'm sorry. I replaced my USG with PF Sense, and uh, I think he just kind of saw that. I was having really good success with PFSense, especially on Gigabit. Um, so he's going to do OpenVPN, which I also do, DuckDNS, VLANs, which I will start doing at some point, ad blocking, super easy. There's also a guide for it. I'll link that in the description below, written by um, a moderator, Alan Man. And traffic logging. I haven't really done a whole lot of that, but I would. Maybe I'll play around with it on my test network. Um, so he started with the 2U and eventually just started narrowing down options and seeing what he could get down into a 1U. And it's all based on my mini ITX PFSense guide. Um, I personally run mine in open, conf open air config and it just sits on top of my 16 port switch. Like right, imagine this is a 16 port or 24 port switch. Mine just kind of sits like right here. Um, but obviously his is a little bit more elegant than mine, um, but I change my hardware around all the time, so I really don't mind it so much. And he was right, going to 1U would be a huge challenge, um, but what's really cool about the boards that I have picked out, they, for the most part, use DC power adapters. So you'll notice that this laptop brick is plugged right into the back of the motherboard here. And that's all the power for the entire board. There's no 24 pin ATX connector. There's no four or eight pin ATX connector for the CPU. It all just goes right through here. And these little boards are designed for thin clients, smaller applications like this. And I mean, this is ideal. Um, I think there's actually like a, an adapter you can do because there's on this board, there's like a little two pin 19 volt uh, uh like atx adapter in there so i wonder if you can get a cable 
that would go from this barrel type connector to that. Uh, I'll point that connector out if I see it. Um, but I mean, for the most part with PFSense, you're just gonna run a couple sticks of RAM, low power processor, um, maybe a 60 gig, 120 gig SSD, really small SSD just for your host OS. Um, it's nice if your motherboard has two NIC on board. If it doesn't, you better have PCI Express on the side so you can run a quad port or a dual port or single port just so you have enough interfaces. You need at minimum two interfaces. So you need one WAN and one LAN, one in, one out. You can think of it that way if you want. So like I said, i5, 3470T, they're super cheap, 31 bucks. DQ 77 KB, good luck finding this motherboard anymore. I think I sold all of them. Um, Titan DC, low profile cooler. So that's all the same as my build. Um, he's only got four gig of RAM, six bucks for four gig of RAM, that's so cheap. 60 gig SSD, yep, called that. I mean, he's pretty much followed the guide right down to pretty much everything. I think he started diverting when he started going to PCIe risers. 1U case, um, power supply, he, I guess he already had, it's free 99. So 187 bucks, including the case and everything, that's not too bad. I mean, the USG, uh, Ubiquiti USG is 135 retail, I think, maybe 150 retail. Um, and sure, it's got some software to back it up, but man, PFSense, even this box, even like a Celeron, is way more powerful than a USG. Uh, so I would rather go this route every time. So it looks like he's got some high CPU temps in the current config, and I think that's because of the lid. So, um, damn, I can't see that 19 volt connector right there. Um, he does mess around with the riser a little bit, he gets that to work. And he's hiding it again with the wires here. Oh, that's rough. Uh, I guess he went to a lower profile cooler, added some exhaust fans, and man, that brought the temp down from 72 to 54, uh, which is more than, that's plenty. Like that's, if it's under 60, don't need to worry about it. I, I mean, especially if it's under 55, you really don't need to worry about it. That's perfect. Um, and yeah, so he's he's got a very solid build. Um, he's posted this in the completed build section. I don't think he's completed, uh, like fully updated it because if I recall correctly, if I go to the guide itself, he's posted some things. Oh, <laughs> someone copied his build because they liked it so much. So that's, that's kind of what spurred me to make this video. Um, it does seem like a fairly elegant solution, actually, uh, provided you can find things that fit. Um, I think although he's using the Noctua 40 mil fans as intake, whereas uh, Causes Back was using them as exhaust. Oh, here is that 19 volt connector I was talking about right here. Um, it's just two pins. Uh, like I said, it's DC, just like the barrel plug is DC. So I believe you can use this. That's the whole point of it, is to have an internal DC uh, power supply. Um, much fancier cooler, though. Very clean. Um, so yeah, I've seen his build around a few times. And uh, I mean, a lot of the PFSense builds are really cool. Here's Ironic Badger. You may know him from linuxserver.io. Uh, very, very cool guys over there. They have the best dockers around. Only the best. The very, very best. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to end with a glamour shot of his build. Um, very, very awesome. I wish I had the uh, time and dedication to research and put stuff together but that's what makes me really really happy with the community um, I really want to just not tell you what to buy I want to tell you what I researched what's compatible um, and then give you the tools to build stuff 
like this on your own that's very very cool that is to your style it's what you want you can feel accomplished you can um, make it your own and you can make it do what you want because you built it and you picked out all the parts and it's in your budget and all the fun stuff like that so this is a really really good example of all of those things um, he spent a couple weeks getting everything right didn't get frustrated just figured out what worked what didn't work ultimately he came up with a really really cool uh, project and uh, I would say really good uh, standalone piece of hardware here so if you like this video and you want me to make more of these in the future I'll probably put out like maybe one of these a week um, I don't know that I want to flood my channel with just talking about other people's crap I say crap uh, lovingly it's not crap but you know what I mean um, so I probably won't make these all the time but I do like showing off cool stuff if I see it so if you like this just drop a like and uh, head over on to the forum and and tell them how how cool his build is so thanks for checking out the video I'll see you guys next time